This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. My name is Shannon Morris. It's your weekly dose of Techno Loss. Welcome to our humble abode. I am very excited. Why? Because this is one of the last episodes of Domain Buffett. <laughs> This will be a lot less echoey, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, the, the last thing. episode was slightly echoey. I was just down there. They're, they've taken out the racks. We're putting in the sound oh, walls. We're yes. making all of the things. It's going to be so cool. Okay. Soon we will all know the power of this fully operational warehouse. Okay, I am excited for the excited. fact that we're going to have room to actually set up everything. I can't wait to have like a drone section and yes. a 3D printer section, a laser cutter section, yes. and an antenna section. Yes. It's going to be so awesome. Half pipe. Half pipe. Ooh. No, it, I don't think the insurance people would like that. <laughs> Moving on. Moving to the place. We with have. The thing. Uh, we're doing something interesting that has been in the news lately. Oh yes, this is why the port pilots aren't here yet. Um, so what's going on? Hey, viva la revolution! And uh, props to all our peeps in Hong Kong. Uh, that's why this kind of hit our radar recently, as they are, uh, you know, going through the protests yeah. and stuff. And as such, it's that governments they don't like the protests too much. They never so do. Sometimes they like to, you know, Arab Spring style, turn off the internet and or otherwise just disable certain services. Like in this case, um, what, what was the social network that Instagram? was? Instagram. Instagram. Why turn off Instagram? It's just full of selfies they and turned cats. turned it off instantly. Okay. So people were using Instagram to basically um, chat <laughs> back and forth to converse right. and make sure that you know, they were at the right place. To get their nonviolent protest on, which yeah. is KRAD Ultra Elite. It's legit. Um, so as an alternative means of communications, and we've touched on this briefly was we've talked about like alternative internet internet infrastructure and stuff mm -hmm. there's yeah. project byzantium and a bunch of other awesome ways to create mesh networks and sorts of things where if my phone is near your phone why do we need a cell tower to talk to each other why should we have to go through the man as it were uh, and open garden is a uh, project that has done a lot of awesome meshy stuff uh, previously yes. and has gotten a lot of press because their fire talk fire fire chat chat fire so chat application is fire chat used. yeah fire chat is an application for both ios and android it's completely free and it's made to allow you to chat with everyone around you and also people around the world it requires no internet but it does require internet to actually set it up in the first place it's got a couple of flaws it does it has some caveats we'll, we'll get into this so you can download FireChat from openguardit.com slash apps, or you can just go to the Google Play Store and search for uh, FireChat as well. Yes. It's, it's, uh, the idea is if you, for example, don't have an internet connection, uh, you know, or you're in airplane mode, and then you've gone and then thus re-enabled your local radio stuff like Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth, it can use those radios to seek out new life and new civilizations and basically other people that are also running the app uh, uses you know Wi-Fi and Bluetooth basically right. beacons to say like hey I'm running fire chat and then it creates a really cool Ooh. ad hoc network meshy style where it's kind of it's pretty cool the thing it's is cool it's cool because it's got stored and forward capabilities it's got capabilities where like if I want to send a message to Paul and Paul's you can't see but Paul's way back there right and then I'm like hey Paul what's up dude and then it, you know you it goes to your phone and then your mm -hmm. phone sends it to Paul and then everybody's happy, right? It's peer to peer. Except it's not an open specification. Right. This uh, this fire chat stuff. So, uh, but but it's getting a lot of press, which is good because it gets people thinking about the fact that this stuff is possible. And then hopefully it's it will either morph into something that is actually s open specification and can be used by lots of other things, and or just gets people thinking about the possibility. And then something universal does come around, which would be really freaking cool. But until then, it serves as an awesome platform to demonstrate cool technologies. Yes, it does. So we actually ran across this blog post over at breezeentropy.org, and it's by a Nameless Poster. He actually figured out that you can use uh, BlueCat, which is basically like NetCat, but it's for Bluetooth, to see what is going on when you open FireChat and converse back and forth with another person that also has FireChat. Is this the only reason why you like this segment, is because it's got NetCat in it? It might be. Yeah. Well, hey, what can I say? I really like NetCat, and I like... The internet Meow. is for cats. cats. And, and now decentralized <laughs> with Bluetooth. Now, Blue, Blue Cat's a really cool device. I'm learning it a is. lot about RFCOM and about the way that Bluetooth actually 
like the, the communications protocol is really interesting with the channels and the URLs and the... Usually Bluetooth is encrypted, so you can't really see what's going on. Like if you connect to, I don't know, your car or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. But for this use case scenario, you can see what people are talking about Ooh. on your phone. Oh, yes. I love a protocol that's totally out in the open. Okay. Fire chat Walk me is not it. encrypted at Walk all. Me through it. Okay, so <laughs> we have it both on our phones. We do. My, the setup process, I must say, I tried to do this completely anonymously, as oh. it were. Uh, <laughs> that said, this is not a burner phone by any stretch of the imagination. The, the phone is brightness. way bigger than yours. Anyway. Um, Yours is way bigger. So, uh, <laughs> so I tried to do this while in airplane mode, um, mm. kind of simulating w what a burner might be, and I couldn't. But even you get ran into a so problem. Can't even get it through the setup process. Yeah, you actually have to be connected to the internet to uh, put in your your name, which they ask for your full name, but it can be whatever you want mm -hmm. it to be. Uh, your username and then your email, and you can just put in fake credentials because it doesn't check. It doesn't I send you an email and I tried and verification uh, thing. So I wasn't able to s create the account uh, to use the functionality of the app while offline. Mm -hmm. uh, the the just sign up button was not available. So it wasn't even until like I went okay out of airplane mode, connect back to the internet, that right. then I was able to do that. And then funnily enough, it decided that foo at example.com had already been used. <laughs> so thankfully, you don't have to actually get the email and do an activation thing for your yeah. account. So you know, there's that. So when you first start up FireChat, just make sure that you have an internet connectability so you can actually sign up for it, and then you can log in. You can either chat with everyone in an everyone channel, nearby channel, which will just be people in your 200 foot vicinity, I think it is, or you can join other random uh, chat rooms basically, like coding, there's one for Linux, there's one for coffee. You know you know what I love though? It reminds me of AOL in the 90s. Oh, it's totally AOL. <laughs> ASL. <laughs> J-K-L-O-L. Totally AOL. <laughs> so basically you get everything set up and then you can disconnect from your Wi-Fi after you have it all set up and mm. after you've run your first chat. Yes, and we mm. used this to chat in a nearby, in fact, I'm going to go back into, let's see, airplane mode mm -hmm. and I'm going to go back and turn on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. But I'm not connecting to any Wi-Fi networks. Right, um, you're just... Yes. So there we go. So now both of those radios are available. Okay. And I'm going to disconnect from any of my networks that I know of on Wi-Fi. So I'm disconnected from those and I'm going to turn on airplane mode. So right now just Bluetooth is on. And you also want to, to make this work with Bluecat, mm, right. we're going to set our Bluetooth from only visible to paired devices to visible to all nearby ah, Bluetooth thanks devices. Thanks for reminding me. Yes. So now visible to all nearby devices and then under settings you can set the threshold normally it's like two minutes while you're pairing your bluetooth headset your visibility you can timeout. set that visibility at least in android uh, to be forever and then yes. everyone can always track you from your bss id wherever you go it's fantastic okay and then you want to download bluecat so bluecat is over at bluecat.sourceforge.net slash bluecat and that's spelled b-l-u-c-a-t so you go download, download that, and it's just a simple zip file. So you just get the zip and then run it. Yes. So you've got that on right. your computer, correct? Sure. Awesome. Yes. All right. Okay. So now that you have this set up, there it is. Okay. There cool. we go. We get, I just wanted to give props to the cute, almost ASCII-looking kitten. Very it's a, good it's stuff. It's a Pop-Tart cat with Bluetooth on it. <laughs> it is. It's a Pop-Tart cat. Okay, so first off, type in your terminal uh, Bluecat devices. Aha. Uh -huh. Also, if you do just Bluecat, you can see, again, cute little oh, ASCII yeah. cat. Just want to <laughs> point that out. So devices, yes. Okay. And there is no Bluetooth adapter powered on. Right. Hang on. I need to unplug my uh, faithful USB Bluetooth adapter. <laughs> and... Back in, in and reset that. Okay. And it is unhappy with me. And through the magic of turning it off and on again, <laughs> we bring you back to your regularly scheduled segment. So, where we left off, we were trying to get Blue Cat to recognize all of our Bluetooth devices within the vicinity. And yes. we did with Bluetooth Blue Cat services. So, or Blue Cat devices, excuse me. So when you type that in, it's gonna search for the local devices and it should pick up both my phone as well as Darren's phone since we both have Bluetooth on. Hey, so there it is. There's my Nexus 5 and then the GPE one, that one is yep. your phone. That's my Sony, there Perfect. we go. Okay, so after that, 
you want to copy uh, one of the unique identifying. Uh, it's like a MAC address. Yeah, the MAC address from one of them. So. Okay. Okay, so you'll copy the Nexus 5 one. So then you type in Blue Cat Services and then that Nexus 5 number. Hit enter. So we're looking for all of the services from that device. Exactly. So you're going to see like my Google Play services. You're going to see one for Pandora probably, you know, all the regular oh, wow. stuff that Quite you Quite a few in to. fact. So here's the Nexus 5 and we've got all of these services available. Pandora link. Okay. Ooh. Pandora link. Yeah, Map SMS, Android network access point. We've got a headset gateway, hands-free AV remote. Okay, so we're going to run sync, it. Sync, sync. Do you, do you drive a Ford? I do. So <laughs> you didn't see, but you didn't see Fire Chat, right? No, I did not see, I don't see Fire Chat in this list. Right. But you do see it for Darren. I do see it on mine. So this is, if I scroll up some, this is the GPE device. And uh, okay, so mine, very similar, but you don't see Ford okay. Sync on here because it don't drive a Ford. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to try to reopen Fire Chat and I want you to try running that same command again, okay? All right, go for it. Go for it, go, go, go. And I'm gonna send a few texts out just to see if that might, might trigger it, we'll see. Outside world. Hey, hey, I see it now. You see it? Yep, I've awesome. got two. Cool. Okay. These two are new, because it used to end at sync proxy, yes. and now it ends with two additional fields. All right, so go. that first one, it doesn't have a name, it's just blank, and then it's on channel 15 at the very end. The second one that you see down there, it's called Fire Chat, so this one is basically just a call to action, if you want to call it's it It's a beacon that. saying, hey, yeah, I'm running Fire Chat. And that one's on a different channel, like mine, I believe, is on channel six or something? Yours is on eight, mine eight. is on six. Ah, okay. Hey, I think they switched back and forth. How yeah, interesting. They might. So now that you know what channels they're on, you can listen to those channels with another command. Okay. So for this one, you want to type in blue cat, mm -hmm. TAC URL, BTS, TAC URL, and mm -hmm. then space BTS, PP, colon, slash, slash, and whatever my ID is, and then colon 15, so channel 15. When you hit enter with this, and I'll type in some more chat messages. All right. What's up? Hack five rules. And send me some chat messages too. Chat with me, dude. Oh I know. yeah. This makes for great, great TV. You, you know what I love? This is my favorite. It used to be like, eh, and now it's like. <laughs> okay, so you got some information in there. So let's go ahead and look at your computer. Okay, okay. so you can see my username is the snubberizer. Where is that? Oh, oh, user colon the snubberizer. Nice. And then you can also see I'm using FireChat. Nearby is the channel. And then the name is Saturn. So that's my username, Saturn. Uh -huh. And then under that, what's you'll up? see, yeah, you'll start and seeing different texts. So rules. I sent you what's up and I sent you hack five rules. So it's, sh it's showing you whatever I was sending out, but it's mm -hmm. not going to show you anything that I receive back. You know what's interesting about this? What? Doesn't seem to be any bit authenticated. Exactly. So no are you thinking what I'm thinking? No whatsoever. Uh, would, that, would that imply that perhaps... Kind of scary. Perhaps seeing that this is in fact just a uh, netcat for Bluetooth essentially, we could, I don't know, say inject this then and then make messages appear from whoever we want them to appear from as if Probably. it was the 90s and we were abusing SMTP servers. Actually, I think you can. So according to this log, this whole blog that um, Nameless created, he tried something similar to that. He actually put in a whole bunch of information from his laptop. So he made his his phone think that his laptop was a fire chat client. Okay. And then he wrote in a little message and it sent to the fire chat client that he was talking to. Fantastic. It works. Hooray. Isn't that creepy? So what no, no, no well, okay, so it's creepy and it's awesome so because why on the one hand, this? well, because networking is hard. And let's use 
raw sockets. So no, I mean, so I, on the one hand, like I don't want to poo-poo this because it's yes, there's an obvious flaw here. It's not But the safe. fact that the meshing technology even works is actually really cool. I mean, would you not cool. say that when, okay, the service notwithstanding, we're like needing to be online to sign up and wanting mm -hmm. your real name and not having any sort of authentication or authentic authenticity checks or using any sort of encryption yeah. where you could simply do, you know, Diffie Hellman exchanges for the things and then use PKI where you've got <laughs> the, you know, crypto is hard. Um, so a lot of people just don't use it. And mm -hmm. as we found out, um, FireChat doesn't use it, <laughs> which kind of opens you up to a whole bunch of bad things that could happen if somebody were to, I don't know, impersonate another figure yep. that was trusted in some sort of scenario of, uh, of protest or whatever have you, where these things are most useful. Um, now, I did notice mm. one thing when we first paired my, my phone with uh, your laptop. Mm -hmm. It had to ask me if I, I wanted to pair with Darren's laptop. Yeah, we should say but that because we had to do that before before we did the segment. But the thing is, you could just change the name of your laptop to something like Fire Chat. Chat. <laughs> and then you, I'd be like, oh yeah, Pear, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And that's so. that's social engineering at its best. Yep. I love this. <laughs> I, I Hats off to all the geeks involved, and this is fantastic. And it's a great use of both a really cool meshing technology that will hopefully grow or spawn or uh, I don't spawn ideas of other cool things that will do it better. Uh, <laughs> there are other options out there, though. Oh, yes. We should. Well, okay, so there are other options that rely on an internet connection. Yes. And if you're going to do it, I recommend using Tor because it's, as, as far as what we have as citizens, probably our best defense mm -hmm. uh, against censorship and things of that nature. Even though people check those nodes. Okay, sure, sure. But, you know, like <laughs> hey, I said, I it's all it, best. One of the commenters it's, will. It's, 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 <laughs> look, it's the best we got right now, yep. right? <laughs> like, you know, hacker satellites notwithstanding, yeah. uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, there's still Tor Chat. To roll your own infrastructure. So we've covered BitMessage, and then there's also uh, Tor Chat. But yeah, BitMessage was the one I talked about. OTR is pretty good, actually. Lava. That's a great protocol. If you want to see something that has lots of different clients implement that, I think that OTR is a fantastic bet. And I would love to see OTR adapted to some sort of mesh networking technology like yes. this. because. Uh, while I've seen other projects that require different physical hardware for users to have, people don't have that physical hardware. And when they need it, they're not going to be able to get it. <laughs> so using like what's built into your phone, a la Bluetooth and mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, kind of awesome. And beacons, and we'll leave it at that. And bacon. No, beacons. <laughs> you can totally abuse those things. You can fit so much payload into a beacon. It Let us know matter. what you think over at feedback at hack5.org. And until then, I think we got a sponsor for this show. Oh yeah, let's, let's take a quick break. Yeah. We'll be right back. It doesn't matter if you're a fan of free candy or open sky or Tetra or Logic Link or a turkey, or if the open source encryption software has been made by the government the whole time or obfuscated or a frame or if a packet hits a pocket on a socket on a port or free mustaches. If you have a conspiracy theory, you need to snag a domain name and web hosting fast. fast. Boom, up and running. You need a website. A website needs a domain and you can get those over at dom dom domain.com. Then get this, domain.com, they get a very quick domain discovery system and a very easy checkout process. And you know what that means? Boom, up and running. I don't know where this is going. Did you know the first female pilots were called Aviatrix? Whoa, the guys over at domain.com huge fans of Hack5. And I've told you time and time again, guys, Domain.com is awesome because they're affordable, they're reliable, they're easy to use, they're super fun, but mainly because they're a fun place to do business. They're active on social media. You can tweet them at Domain.com and see why. It's just the, the fun guys. Boom, up and running. There's so much fun to do business with. That, these guys are zany. These guys are fun and crazy and they love Hack5 and they want to hook you up. So that's why they came out with a very easy to remember coupon code for Hack5 viewers like you. It's called HAK5 and it spells Hack5 and with it, with it at domain.com's checkout, you get an extra 15% off. Whoa. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Is that, is that right, Bear? Yeah, see, Bear agrees. It's time for the trivia question of the week. Our last trivia question was, the element first discovered and recorded by modern science was what? And the answer was phosphorus. Now this week's trivia question is, who was the first space tourist? Because there actually was a space tourist. 
really, it's so awesome. I wish I was that person. You can answer that over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies. Good luck. <laughs> that just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5. Oh boy. <laughs> what? So you can email us over at feedback at hack5.org and let us know what you think of the show and what you'd like to see us cover in the future. Yeah, and while you're over there, you can go to hack5.org slash follow and find all of the places where you can stalk us on the social media networks. And thank you so, so, so much, like this many muches for supporting our show throughout the years. Uh, we really appreciate it and we're able to move into a bigger place because of you guys. And we're so, so excited about that. we can do that. epic so. robot stuff. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, remember we used to have a, uh, uh, oh gosh, what was it? It was a missile launcher and it shot yes. foam missiles at us and it had a webcam mm -hmm. and lasers and people could control it from the internet. We did that long before the Big Bang Theory. That was did. at, oh really? Yep. That was on the Big Bang? Yep. Oh wow, yeah, we did that at the Hack House. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to the new Hack House, the Hack Warehouse, where I'm thinking um, uh, robots. Robots. Remember? You want to have robots no, 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 that are no, no, no. controlled you by know the what I'm internet? About? Like, um, We're going to die. No, 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 no. You know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, uh, we saw them at CES. Cylons? They're so freaking crazy. It's awesome. The, the CES ones were like the, the telepresence. Thank you, Paul. Oh, telepresence, telepresence is the word. Yeah. So, uh, the ability for like, you know, people to be able to log in from the internet to a robot and then rove it around the I warehouse and then we can see them and they can see us and then they can fire missiles. I mean, what could go wrong? So we're going to continue on at the warehouse, but thank you thank you so much for supporting us. And of course, if you haven't supported us yet, which you obviously are if you're watching you're this watching show. You're watching, so you're already doing a great job. You can uh, yeah, go you over can to the hack like shop. It or stuff. HKShop.com. Oh, that's where you can website. support us directly. And we love that. And that's what allows us to continue. So thank you very much. And with that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Mullers. Trust your techno lost. Bye bye. <laughs> wow, where'd that one come from? That just about wraps up this week's episode of the Hack. Where is it? Ugh. Okay. Rebot. F disk format reinstall. Do da, do da. Get really excited this episode. Bye bye.